Hi, this is Chris from The Stephanie Miller Show. Please enjoy this exclusive clip from Political Voices Network. It, it, wanted to get your take, though. Angry Staffer tweets, you know who isn't happy about uh, the primary results? The GOP elite. They understand that Trump is a sandwich of a candidate and they're going to be the ones eating it. I mean, I do think there is some panic going on. <laughs> About. There certainly is, but as long as the GOP elite does whatever it is that the party ends up picking, they have only themselves to blame. Right. You know, they have a choice here too. They yeah. don't have to go along with the party. They don't have to go along with Trump. They can take a different path. It may mean that they lose the White House. It probably means that they lose the White House. Um, but if if they actually see Trump for the threat that he is, not only to this country but to our democracy and democracies abroad yeah um and they would do the right thing but yeah. they're more concerned about their tax cuts they're more concerned about gutting regulations and hurting the environment um than they are about doing the right thing and, and protecting american democracy it is like a weird kink this just like parade of abject humiliation he's subjecting former rivals to i uh, chris hayes said before this campaign is over trump is going to make Pe mike pence come on stage and chant hang mike, hang mike pence yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i mean there just seems to be no level of humiliation they won't stoop to for him no and i, I watched this uh, event with uh senator scott from south carolina oh, where God. he was trying to the senator most cringy scott. biscuity moment ever frangela said he so committed strange. hate crime against himself <laughs> it was so strange and like this is what it's going to be like for the next year, yeah. right? And if he's elected, it's going to be what it's like for, you know, it might be like this from a jail cell, but um, uh, nonetheless, this is what it's going to be like. Um, and look, the media doesn't cover Trump like they used to, yeah. right? He's still saying, every day he's still saying something nutty on, on truth. Yeah. So His dementia is starting to break through even to Fox News, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, that's the good news, I think, about Nikki Haley staying in as she yeah. keeps talking about it, right? And we'll see. I mean, imagine if Nikki Haley wins a state on Super Tuesday. Yeah. I don't think it's going to happen. But if she did win a state on Super Tuesday, I think Trump would lose his, his whatever is left of his mind. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, so let's talk about, you know, speaking of the coverage of Trump, I mean, it's just we're so used to he just gets a pass on everything mm -hmm. that it's just, oh, you know, it's just Trump so he can, you know, do whatever. But debating. I mean, you know, I, this is obviously the story behind closed doors is that his advisor, they're not going to let him because obviously his dementia would be on display. Um, we've seen it in front of friendly crowds or friendly interviewers, you know. Um, yeah, Dino Badala said Trump refuses to debate Nikki Haley because he knows his mental decline would be on display for all to see. Or at least Trump's handlers know that because Trump no, has no idea what's happening. It's time the corporate media pressure Trump to debate Haley before the South Carolina primary. America must see Trump's dangerous mental decline. Yeah. Well, you know, again, I, I'm, I would doubt he's even going to de debate Biden he's if he's to. the nominee. I mean, well, for the same reason. Hillary. He almost didn't debate Biden the first time. Right. Right. So at some point he's going to, you know, uh, decide that he's just going to take the plunge and not do it at all. Um, and look, um, I think that is a big gamble um, to, to walk away from those opportunities. Those are moments in a campaign when, you know, the whole world is watching. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you only walk away from it if you can't pull it off. Yeah. If there's hope of pulling it off. Yeah. Wow, even Mia Farrow chimed in. She said, I'm betting Trump will not debate Biden. He knows he can't. His brain's not what it was. He's unfamiliar with and uninterested in issues and solutions domestic and internationally. He attempts a kind of uh, stand-up routine peppered with insults, vile language, lame jokes, and a lot of revenge stuff, plenty of incoherence. I mean, I love that the Biden camp, Carl, is just starting to post his quotes. Like, you know, the death penalty, we're in a, that incoherent... <laughs> they're just, you know, the Biden camp's like, we don't know what he means either. Like, it's just... Yeah. incoherent right well and you know the the last uh reporter that you just read from about whether he'll do it uh, he doesn't need to be interested in policy or international affairs or anything else in order to debate he wasn't interested in those things before when he was showing up for the debates yeah um but it speaks volumes that uh, his handlers and perhaps even himself believe his shtick that he's been doing for the last you know six years seven years um, had a shelf life that is long expired. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love Brett, our friend from uh, Midas Touch, said, remember, folks, when we go to the polls this November, you can either choose D for democracy or R for rapist. <laughs> I mean, I, 
I just, of all the weird political years you and I have been through, Carl, this one is just, oh my God. I've decided that I'm going to start saying this year is precedented. Because, <laughs> yeah, that you know, um, I've been saying unprecedented for almost a decade now, every year, and uh, this one is precedented. Yeah. I mean, I could say that I could never see it happening, but I could say that I could see it getting worse and worse and yeah. stranger and stranger. So yeah. where this where this goes, who I mean, knows? But we can't give in uh, to despair. But you know, Dana Goldberg uh, tweeted something like that too. That it is somewhat depressing to live in a country where it is even a possibility <laughs> that Donald Trump could be president again. That enough people could support this. Well, and don't forget, between now and November, some of these cases are going to be done. So, yeah. you, if we think it's weird right now, wait until that happens. Yeah. Um, Carl, just have to get your take before you go. (laughs) And not only are we in the second highest COVID surge and only 20 percent of us have gotten the vaccine that covers the variants that are currently out there. But uh, measles is back for the kids. Isn't that fantastic? There's a measles outbreak because parents are refusing to get their kids vaccinated for anything and then sending them to school with the aforementioned disease. Right. Well, you know, uh, school divisions who are on it are looking for every way possible to help close it. Every year, there's a um, effort to try and get kids who are not vaccinated vaccinated, right? Mm -hmm. It's not entirely driven by vaccine denial. Sometimes it's driven by um, access to close proximity where you can get a vaccine. Yeah. So school divisions that are actually concerned about making sure that kids have the vaccines they need to keep everybody safe are doing everything they can to um, close those gaps in their school divisions. Yeah, I just the was ones a story that don't on- and don't trust in science or not. Right. You know, there was a story this morning on CNN about how you know airline behavior, you know, incidents on airlines are worse than ever, even though COVID's over. I mean, it started as a national tantrum over masks. Most of the incidents were related to having to wear a mask, but I, it just is an entire nation that seems to be like just Trump has made it okay to act like an angry toddler in any situation. But it, it's interesting. They're saying like there, there's still all these incidents of misbehavior on flights because people think it's okay to be an a hole anywhere now. I think that we can't use that to like bargain with the airlines for like an extra five inches in the seat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm mad about it. You don't know what well, I went through just getting to San Francisco, and I didn't take it out on a poor flight attendant. No, of course not. I like. I don't even like they. What they go through, and I have friends that are yeah. uh, that work in the airlines. What they go through is insane. Um, yeah. But I would promise to like not even raise an eyebrow, not even blink, if they would just give us a few more inches in every yeah. seat. Yeah. Uh, Oh, no, you I know, almost I, got bumped off my flight. I had to pay extra to b- buy a seat I already paid for to check a bag I didn't have to check. Like, I was mad by the time I was in Burbank Airport for, since the beginning of time. But it's just, you, you know, you, you, you teach that in your schools, Carl. You don't take out whatever's happening, you know, on people that have nothing to do with it, you know? Say, are, you, are you telling me you realize that the person standing at that, that, that ticket counter was not personally responsible for all the problems you had? Listen, I'm going broke buying Starbucks cards for flight attendants. I can only keep this up so long, people. <laughs> anyway, all right, Carl, great stuff as always, and uh, keep fighting that good fight on the school board. We love you. Have a good one. Hey, all. Glenn Kirshner here. I hope you'll join me on my new audio podcast, Justice Matters. I'll be using my 30 years as a federal prosecutor and Army JAG to unpack, break down, and explain the legal issues of the day particularly where the legal intersects with the political. Please look for Justice Matters with Glenn Kirshner wherever you generally get your podcasts.